Mike Lindale, the My Pillow Man, says that the FBI stole his cell phone at a Hardee's. Also, Donald Trump is making all of his attorneys have to now get attorneys themselves. MAGA, making attorneys get attorneys. Let me first start with the video of Mike Lindale. Here it is. Today, the FBI, uh, you're going to hear this, and you're probably already hearing it in the news. The FBI came after me and took my phone. They surrounded me at a Hardee's and uh, took my phone that I run all my business, everything with. Um, um, they could have just, what they've done is weaponize the FBI. Um, it's disgusting. I don't have a computer. Everything I do have that phone, everything was on there. And, uh, um, and they told me not to tell anybody. Here's an order not to, don't tell anybody. Okay, I won't. <laughs> well, I am. So, there you go. Yeah, as I've said before, I think Mike Lindell is back on crack cocaine. That's my conclusion. All right, let's go ahead and dig into it. According to the My Pillow Man, the FBI raided him at a hard <laughs> took his cell phone, and he does not have a computer. Woe is me. I don't even own a computer. Sir, you proclaim to be a multimillionaire. If you don't own a computer or a backup plan, that's your damn fault. Not mine. No, the FBI's. All right, here it is. My pillow CEO and prominent conspiracy theorist, Mike Lindell, claims that the FBI executed a search warrant while he was at a fast food restaurant in Minnesota. Minnesota. Mike Lindell claims to the Daily Beast that the FBI seized his phone at a Hardee's restaurant, according to Zachary Patrizzo, uh, based on reporting. Lindell had previously claimed his phone records were subpoenaed by the House Select Committee investigation as they are investigating the January 6th terrorist attack. It is unknown if the reported seizure is related to a flood of recent activity by federal prosecutors. There's more. The Justice Department officials have seized the phones of two top advisors to former President Donald Trump and blanketed his aides with about 40 subpoenas in a substantial escalation of the investigation into his efforts to subvert the 2020 election. People familiar with the inquiry said on Monday, the New York Times reported. So what does this mean? Okay, well, the grand jury, the federal grand jury is substantiating this seizure or these seizures of particular items. They are connected to material issues that need to be answered in a court of law. That's what's happened. All right, the seizure of the phones coupled with a widening effort to obtain information from those around Mr. Trump after the 2020 election represents some of the most egregious or aggressive steps the department has taken thus far in its criminal investigation into the actions that led to the January 6, 2021 assault on the Capitol by a pro-Trump mob. Now remember, the grand jury, the federal grand jury is likely investigating multiple dynamics connected to one goal, which was to overthrow democracy as we know it. The grand jury in the state of Georgia is investigating multiple dynamics of election fraud, including the fake electoral scheme. Now, Donald Trump, he likely is the reason why his attorneys are in trouble Remember when they said there was no additional, no more classified information at the former president's home? Well, that was a material misrepresentation of fact. Now they got to get attorneys. Former U.S. attorney Joyce Vance told MSNBC's Nicole Wallace Tuesday that a newly unsealed portion of the DOJ's affidavit behind the FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago suggests former President Donald Trump helped helped to conceal the existence of more documents at his private home. That's called criminal conspiracy. Criminal conspiracy only requires the meeting of two minds. That's it. That is criminal conspiracy. There's more. Vance appeared 
to be referring to the certified letter that former AON host and Trump lawyer Christina Bob reportedly signed declaring all materials taken from the White House at Mar-a-Lago had been returned to the National Archives. The statement turned out to be false as over 100 more classified information or classified documents were recovered from Trump's possession in early August, according to the FBI. Now, here's where the rubber meets the road, okay? This attorney is a Trumpite. She's part of the cult. But she may get a rude awakening now because her actual signature could cause her a criminal charge. And obviously, the the defense is going to be, well, I just trusted my, my client's word for it. Not good enough. It's not how this works in lawyer world. If you had a good faith reason to not believe your client because of, I don't know, him historically lying, then you as an attorney are obligated to engage in due diligence before you make a misrepresentation to the court. That is how the rule works. There's more of an implication, she says, in this newly released information that the former president did in fact play a role in the provision of information about documents to whoever the lawyer who certified this information to the Justice Department, Vance continued, added. So this gives DOJ more of a basis to move forward. And of course, because this involves the grand jury, subpoenas are not documents that are ultimately seized in the search. DOJ is free to move forward with inquiries to witnesses without violating Judge Cannon's order. Remember, Judge Cannon, the federal judge that Trump appointed, who may have in fact committed obstruction of justice, made a ruling, a disastrous ruling, an unprecedented ruling, by appointing a special master. That's not abnormal. That happened. But a special master is a third party attorney who will look at evidence seized by the government and say, this is covered by attorney client privilege, and this is not. That's all they do. Well, this judge has given this particular Uh, special master, special powers that no other special master has ever had. The special power is this. She says he can also determine what information is covered by executive privilege, which is not settled law. Does executive privilege exist beyond the presidency? There is no court ruling to settle that issue. and There is no statutory dynamic. The judge has literally appointed an individual to make that decision for everybody in this country. All right. My dear brother, Barry, what are your thoughts here? Um, There's a a lot to unpack. Obviously, President Biden could actually settle this whole executive privilege thing, you know, rather quickly by just coming out and saying, hey, listen, none of it as the president, I'm going to tell you, none of it's covered by executive privilege. So there you go. And and I wish he would. I know he wants to stay out of it. And I understand that probably for political reasons he needs to. But at the same time, that would end that argument, you know, in a heartbeat. But with regard to Trump lawyers being in so much trouble, the thing I find so hilarious about it is that they continue to make the situation worse for themselves. I mean, Alina Haba goes on TV, I think it was two weeks ago, and says that she knows the documents that were in Mar-a-Lago were not all over the floor because she's seen them. And she says he has people down there all the time, which does, you know, refute Christina Bob signing in August that, nope, you've got them all back when his own other lawyer is on TV saying, no, we all knew they were down there. Like she ruined any kind of defense they may have on that and kind of implicated herself too in this like, oh yeah, we know we lied to the FBI and DOJ when we signed that filing. So all of them are in trouble. And of course, poor little Mike Lindell, right? I mean, the guy just wants to get his thick burger and ends up <laughs> losing his cell phone to the FBI. But he is he's in a whole heap of trouble uh, with regard to what's going out there and uh, going on out there in Colorado with Tina Peters, because in that in that filing that he you know showed, even though the FBI told him he's not allowed to, he's listed as a co-conspirator. He and about you know eight or nine other individuals are listed as co-conspirators to the crimes that Tina Peters has been charged with. 
So this is not just, oh, we need to look at your cell phone, Mr. Lindell. This is, we're looking for evidence so we can charge you. He is a direct target. And I don't know if he can even comprehend the danger that he is in right now. I mean, he doesn't seem all there to me. Uh, you know, I've been paying close attention to the guy for a long time and he could end up, and I think he likely will end up very soon with criminal charges against him, yeah. uh, just for Colorado, you know, that doesn't even include what the DOJ is looking at and the January 6th committee. So that guy's in deep trouble. All of Trump's friends just seem to be going down at, at an alarming rate for them. You know, it's great for democracy that we're seeing this. But Trump has got to be just almost wetting himself at this point because everybody close to him is getting a subpoena. This has to be the worst experience of a former president in the history uh, history of this country. Uh, and to Mike Lindell, here's what he probably does not know. Mike, if they have a warrant to come and take your phone, sir, they're not taking your phone to check your phone. They already did that. They're taking your phone to preserve the evidence for presentation in court. Free advice. I'm not even charging for that. 